This is the Ghazni Rockbox Outdoor Pizza Oven. It's a compact, portable pizza oven that can cook a pizza in less than 60 seconds. It runs on either propane or wood, and Gosney states it can reach temperatures of 932 degrees Fahrenheit. That is insanely hot. Let's see how it does. First off, the rock box comes nicely packaged with the oven itself, a sturdy Velcro carrying handle, a pizza peel, gas burner, wood burner, and a bottle opener. The oven is just a solid little tank, and everything seems to be high quality and well built. The inside has a built-in stone base with stainless steel sides and upper, the outer skin is silicone, and the whole thing comes completely assembled. You don't need to turn one screw to get it going. The oven was a little dusty out of the box, and I gave it a good wipe down before firing it up. To open the legs, lay the oven down on its front and pull each leg out. They fold out twice, and there's a decent amount of friction there, so get a good grip when you yank them out. The legs need to be fully extended to clear the height of the burner. The tripod base is incredibly sturdy, and I believe it's a good choice for this oven. Three legs in this configuration will never wobble. That's why we use them for cameras. To attach the burner, keep the oven on its face. The burners have a bayonet mount. Line up the knobs with the holes and twist. I had a little trouble doing this the first time and I wasn't able to get the burner seated properly. So I came around to the other side and stabilized the oven with my body. Then I applied a little pressure and twisted the burner on with no problem. It's a tight fit and there's a nice high heat gasket that seals it up. Now we're ready to fire this up for the first time. In this video, I'm gonna be testing both the propane and wood burners. But first, let's start with propane. For its first use, Rockbox recommends firing up the oven at its lowest temperature for 30 Did minutes to cure the oven. You see yeah. a flame? Nope. There we go. You got it? Yeah. So we are by no means experts at all in making pizzas, but we do make and eat a lot of pizzas in this house. My go-to method has always been cast iron, but in doing research I've discovered that the dough I typically use cannot handle the high heat the rock box produces. So for this review, we're experimenting with a few different doughs. The first one is a Neapolitan recipe from a guy that goes by the name Pizza Jew. That name is enough street cred for me and I don't even want to learn his real name. The second is a store-bought dough from my local grocery store. I heard from another rock box user that the organic dough from Wegmans doesn't burn in the rock box. And that's great because sometimes you don't have time to make dough and it's nice to have a convenient option. The third is a New York style dough recipe I got from Tom Lehman, AKA the dough doctor. I'll leave a link in the description for both recipes. I think one of the appeals of this oven is its ability to cook true Neapolitan pizzas. Neapolitan pizzas have strict guidelines. Among other things, you have to use zero or double zero flour, San Marzano tomatoes, and the pizza has to be cooked in a wood-fired oven within 90 seconds at a temperature of at least 905 degrees Fahrenheit. So technically, on our first test, this is not a true Neapolitan pizza because we're using propane, but it's close enough. Double zero flour might be tricky to get depending on where you live. I got ours from a specialty store, but you can order it from Amazon. I'll leave a link below. The manual says you're ready to cook at 300 Celsius or 572 degrees Fahrenheit, but I'm gonna crank it a lot hotter than that. The built-in thermometer seems to work great, but I have no way of verifying its accuracy because it's reading the temp below the stone base. But I am using a laser thermometer to double check the surface temp. Rockbox claims it can reach a temperature of 932 degrees Fahrenheit. I got mine to over 900 degrees Fahrenheit, not quite 932, but pretty close, and I'm gonna say their 932 claim is legit. The small discrepancy could be environmental factors, but I'm gonna file this under close enough. The outside of the oven has what Gosney calls safe touch silicone, and I found that to be true. You're not going to want to hold your hand on it, but you can safely touch it for a second or two before it's uncomfortable. With the 12 inch wide opening, the maximum size pizza that you can make in this oven is about 11 inches. That's fine because they cook so fast you can just make more. In the rock box and similar ovens, you need to rotate the pizza to cook evenly, and if you leave it too long without rotating it, you'll burn it. For rotation, I purchased a cheap turning peel on Amazon, but at nine inches wide, I think it may be too large for the rock box. I struggled to get a good turn with it. The benefit to using a turning peel is that the pizza stays in the oven while you turn, thus cooking faster. Personally, I think I like pulling, then rotating so I can keep my eye on it. I will say the biggest struggle I had was not with the rock box itself, but learning to properly launch a pizza. The rock box does come with a launching peel and it does work great, but we mangled more than a few pizzas trying to get them into the oven. If we overloaded the peel with too much flour, the pizza would launch great, but the extra flour would burn and give the crust a bitter, burnt taste. If we didn't use enough flour on the peel, the dough would stick and we were making undercooked calzones. 
After about 40 pizzas, we kind of settled into what we felt worked best, and it was a combination of drier dough and a light dusting of cornmeal on the peel. Now let's talk about wood. I'm a wood fire charcoal guy through and through. It's probably been 15 or more years since I've even owned a propane tank. I'm excited about this option because it means we can take this anywhere without lugging a bulky propane tank around. Have you ever seen a rocket stove? That's essentially what this is. The manual states to use kiln dried hardwood up to five inches long and one inch thick. You wanna start with a couple pieces in the hopper and get them going first. Next, push them down into the chamber and add a few more. When you're using very dry wood this small, it's gonna burn fast and this method requires a little babysitting. I got distracted a few times and my fire almost went out and it doesn't take long. You really need to watch it. The temperature was not as constant as using propane, but that's partly because I was distracted trying to make this video, cook the pizzas and load wood all at the same time. If I wasn't trying to do three things at once, I could have spent more time tending to the fire. So my suggestion would be if you have a lot going on, stick to propane. Also with wood, you are limited to cook time as I went about two and a half hours before the chamber was full and I could no longer add wood. Two and a half hours is more than enough time for us, but if you are using this oven commercially, you may want to stick to propane. The inside of the oven did get a little ashy, but that's to be expected with any wood-fired oven. Propane does burn cleaner. The wood fire chamber is efficient, and even though it wasn't producing a flame, the wood continued to burn and reduce most of this wood to this much ash. Also, I was a little paranoid the wood burner would melt my table, but all these patio blocks turned out to be unnecessary as the wood chamber didn't even get that hot. Now, a lot of people will tell you at these high temps there's not much difference in flavor between wood and propane, we did notice a subtle difference, and overall my family preferred the pizzas cooked with wood. Maybe it's psychological, maybe it's a drier heat, I don't know, but we liked it. Cleanup is fairly straightforward. The oven is so hot that it basically incinerates anything in there, just like the self-cleaning cycle on your home oven. Believe me when I tell you, I had a few mishaps and I got this thing pretty dirty. I used a grill brush on the stone and vacuumed it out and it cleaned up pretty well. I used Barkeeper's Friend on the outside stainless steel and it did a decent job, but I don't think it's ever gonna look new again. I also noticed there was considerably more soot using wood. If you have any recommendations for cleaning, I would love to know. So cost. At the time of this review, the Rockbox was $600. It might be a little more now. Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it is. Rockbox has a growing community of users and one thing I noticed is a lot of professional pizza makers as well as chefs are using these ovens commercially. That's a good sign. Honestly, the oven is so well built, it may be the last one you own, and you could probably leave it to your children. The versatility with wood or propane and portability make it very unique within the pizza oven market. If you're in the market for a pizza oven, give this one a look, I do recommend. And definitely check out Gosney's social media sites, they have a lot of recipes and videos to get you started. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please subscribe and feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Jojo, what are we making? For what? Pizza. Sailboat. Luke, pick up the flower. She dropped it. Luke, You're all done. Go clean your bathroom. Thank you. I got the salad. Oh, this is gonna be so pretty. This video is gonna show her like horrible at making pizzas. It's it's an amazing oven. I just I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>